Welcome to Emma's ESL English. Today we have a listening culture lesson all about Thomas Telford. Thomas Telford's birthday is tomorrow. That's why we're talking about Thomas Telford, just so you know. Okay, who was he? Thomas Telford was born in 1757 in southern Scotland and he was one of the most famous British civil engineers. What is he famous for? At this point, 1700s, Britain was establishing its infrastructure. Thomas Telford designed roads, bridges, and canals. So his infrastructure is what we're still using today across Britain. Thomas came from poor beginnings. He was born on a farm in Dumfrieshire and his father was a shepherd. When he was 14, he started his apprenticeship to a stonemason. Although many apprenticeship programs disappeared in the 1990s in the UK, they're now making a comeback as a solid and valuable form of education. In those days, being an apprentice was one of the only ways to gain a trade, especially if you came from a poor background. He worked in Edinburgh for a while, and then at 25, he moved to London. By 30, Thomas had a wealthy patron. If a wealthy person liked your work or saw promising you, then they might help you find training, attend university, or even pay for you to have a house or even give you a house to live in. At 30, with the help of his patron, Thomas became surveyor of public works in Shropshire. Quite an achievement for a Scottish farmer's son with no money or connections or university education. In Shrewsbury, Thomas worked on the prison and several churches. While in Shropshire, that's the area around Shrewsbury, he really made his name as a civil engineer. He worked on so many bridges, roads, canals, so many things. We're going to talk about some of those today. One of the things that made him stand out was his interest in materials. He was constantly testing the iron, the steel and the stone that he was using to build his bridges, roads and everything else. At this point in British history, canals were one of the most popular forms of transport. Still, this was 30 years before the first railway could be completed. Britain's canals and rivers were moving iron, coal, building materials, and all sorts of things across the country. For the early part of the 1800s, railways and canals were in direct competition. But once the railways were active, the competition was pretty much over. Simply by their speed, railways could beat the canals so easily. What might take a canal weeks and weeks to travel a distance, a train could do in days or even hours. Even before the trains had won, most canal building schemes were being abandoned. Today in Britain, there's been a great revival and restoration of the canals. Now they're recognized for the feat of engineering that they were. Many people live on the canals now and they support a great deal of biodiversity and wildlife. Anyway, back to Telford. When he was working in Shrewsbury, Telford was asked to take on the management and design of Ellesmere Canal. And one of the most famous structures on that canal is an aqueduct in Wales. This aqueduct is 300 meters long and 38 meters high. And Telford created it with his own brand of new construction methods. I've been on this aqueduct. When I was a teenager, we went on a canal holiday on the Langochlan Canal in Wales. I remember we were all standing at the front of the narrowboat, looking out across this very big valley. The valley is down below and the aqueduct is way up high. So when you're traveling on the canal, it's, it's a little strange because we're not used to being on water like that, but also you're really, really high up and there's not really anything in the way of the view. So it's quite an unusual experience. Anyway, me, my mom, my brother and my grandma were all standing at the front of the boat admiring the view. 
when my dad appears behind us and says, oh, isn't it beautiful? It's so great. And my grandma says, yes, it's lovely. It's lovely. And then there's a pause in a few seconds. And she says, who's driving the boat? <laughs> To which my dad said, it's fine, it's fine, it's driving itself. <laughs> the aqueduct is very, very narrow. You can only fit one narrow boat down it at a time. And there's really only inches at either side of the narrow boat. So even if the boat bumps the side of the aqueduct, it really can't do much damage. So my dad had just set it rolling, going straight and was just leaving it to go. <laughs> My grandma had rather a large panic attack. She was not okay with this. And she sent my dad back to the back of the boat to drive the boat. Yes, narrow boats are driven from the back. Don't ask me. It's not, it's not sensible. Back to Telford. The years that Telford was active were some of the busiest years of construction in the UK. And perhaps some of you noticed the dates and wondered all this money coming from for all this construction yes yes i think it is correct to say that a huge amount of the infrastructure of the uk was built on the backs of slaves the uk was very different to america in the sense that we had a very strong out of sight out of mind perspective on the slave trade we didn't bring our enslaved people here to the uk Instead, we took them to Brazil, to the Caribbean, and to America. There, the enslaved people grew and harvested sugarcane and tobacco and many other things that we then sold around the UK and around the world. Without the wealth created by owning, selling, and exploiting enslaved people, Britain's infrastructure building and industrial revolution would not have happened. Back to Thomas Telford. Over the course of his life, Thomas Telford was prolific. He worked on projects across the UK, many of which are still standing and still very much in use today. From harbours to canals, to tunnels, to roads, to bridges, we may not realise, but his legacy is all over the UK, helping us get to work on time, enjoy spectacular views and enjoy our wonderful nature. Telford never married and had no descendants. Due to his position, his funeral took place at Westminster Abbey in London and he was buried there. You can still go and see him. Telford was remembered by his friends as being a delightful companion who had a hearty laugh. He wrote and published his own poetry during his 20s. He wrote articles for the Edinburgh Encyclopedia. For those young ones, that was like the internet before we had one, about architecture and engineering. And he's been commemorated all over the UK. There are so many things with his name on them, including two towns. In the UK, we have a town called Telford, and in America, they also have a town called Telford. <laughs> over his life, he designed and managed the building of 30 bridges and four aqueducts. He's quite a special person, really, and definitely someone the UK really regards as a bit of a hero of ours. <laughs> He's not the only famous civil engineer in the UK, though. There is another one who I'm sure will cover when it's his birthday. See you next time. Bye.